can be a mighty friendly sound. The port fire thins out the enemy, and sometimes there's nothing left. This challenge is going to uh, differ from uh, civilian type challenges like the Echo Challenge is that there's a tactical environment that these Marines are going to be operating in where they're not just competing against other individuals for uh, uh, some sort of prize. The decisions that these Marines are going to be making and be evaluated on are life and death type decisions that they may be called upon to make in the real world uh, at any given time. I'm here at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, covering the Marine Super Squad competition. I happen to be in the midst of the Marines from the 1st Squad, 3rd Platoon, Echo Company, 2nd Battalion, 2nd Marine, 2nd Marine Division. Probably one of the safest places in the country to be right now. The headquarters of the United States Marines has given us permission to film this competition, which is really unique, where the best two infantry squads and the East Coast, all of the Marines, vie to see who's going to be the Marine Super Squad. The other competitors are over there with my colleague, Dr. Davis, and he's going to tell you about them. You're right, Jack. This is Camp Lejeune, but some people call it Bug City. I'm over here with the other contestants. It's 1st Squad, 2nd Platoon, Alpha Company, 1st Battalion, and 6 Marines. We're ready to rock. How we doing? Well, it all starts with the end brief. That's where the safety and administrative details of the competition are explained to the competitors. And this is followed by a very detailed equipment inspection. Well, it's all part of being a Marine, Jack. Let's go to Gunnery Sergeant Coughlin. He's the chief evaluator, and have him tell us what this is really all about. What we're doing this week is the culminating event of an entire year's worth of uh, preparation by these Marines. And uh, for each one of these guys, uh, as a professional instrument, this is, this is the opportunity to prove that they've mastered their trade. Being a super squad uh, winner is a real prestigious uh, title to hold back at your unit. These guys will, will uh, basically be the heroes of their regiment, indeed the, the heroes of the entire division once they go up to headquarters Marine Corps to get awarded. So let's take a look at what these Marines are in for over the next few days. Day one will start with a written exam, and that'll be followed by a hands-on skill test. And then the day will end with a squad live fire match. And this is the last night that they'll be sleeping in beds or eating hot food. Right, Jack. And then on day two, they do a nine-mile hump, forced march, the most physically challenging event of the whole competition. And then that's followed by an individual weapons proficiency on the firing range. Then we go into day three. That's where the tactical problems start. This is where they're really going to be on their toes and have to work as a team. The first two of those events are the recon and the ambush patrol. Yeah, and then fourth day is the final day of the competition, and it has two more tactical problems, the attack and the defend mission. When it's all over, these Marines will have been through the ringer, and one of them is going to be earning the title Marine Super Squad. The competition begins with a written exam, a straight knowledge test of 100 questions about topics every infantryman should know. Map reading, weapons, range estimation, communications, and first aid skills. If you want to win, you got to think. One minute. Once we do, you have 90 minutes to complete the test. You know, I bet these guys thought they were done with taking written tests when they got out of high school. Yeah, this is the new Marines. They can't be that way if they want to earn the Super Squad title. Well, next comes the hands-on testing. The score here, you must assemble and demonstrate the operation of your assigned weapon exactly to standard and in a set limit of time. You're going to look, give it damage, the front cone of it. Well, this Marine looks like he's got it all together on the AT-4. Of course, he better by the look on Gunny Mackey's face. I don't think he's going to let anything slide. Pull the pin. Paul, not only is Gunny Mackey the epitome of an infantry NCO, but his squad won this competition in 1991. So he knows what it's all about, he knows what it takes, and you can bet he's not going to let anything get by him. Next up is the squad live fire match. This is the first team event, and I'm going to let Master Gunnery Sergeant Conyard explain it for us. Each squad is, competes against uh, the range, the time limit, and uh, they have to move from yard line to yard line within a time limit to uh, shoot and engage targets. All right, shooters start at the 600-yard line, 
They have uh, 75 seconds to engage targets. Go! You know what's important for this event is control and putting rounds on target. The squads have to move as one element online and engage targets with the correct weapon at the right distances. And this is really the first test of leadership for the NCOs as much as it is for the other Marines to shoot well. Well, you know, Jack, the Marines say yesterday was the only easy day, but it looks like these guys had some fun out there. Yeah, it looks like 2-2 is really feeling it now, Paul. Well, let's take a look at the Armed Forces and current scoreboard and see where the squads are at the end of day one and after the first three events. Looks like 2-2 has a slight lead over the squad from 1-6, but I wouldn't go away. The action is just getting started. That's Lance Corporal Reddick, North New Jersey. Hi, Mom. Hi, I'm Lance Corporal Wood. I'm from Marion County, Kentucky. Hi, Mom. Welcome back to the Marine Super Squad competition. This segment is brought to you by Armed Forces Insurance, serving the insurance needs of military leaders since 1887. It's morning of day two, and the most physically taxing event of the entire competition is about to begin, the Force Road March. Well, this should be a real test, Jack. One of the things the viewers should understand is that these loads are incredibly heavy. The average guy out there weighs about 175 pounds, and they'll be carrying an average load of over 105 pounds. And the gear is not that high-tech stuff you see in the Eco Challenge. This is good old standard issue Marine Corps stuff. Good stuff, but it doesn't make carrying 60% of your body weight easy by any means. What you're looking for is a little sign that says finish. The last Marine has to cross that line with all gear. That's when your time stops. Five, four, three, two, one. Good right. luck. Too, and they look like they're really moving out. Yeah, I, I don't see how you can keep up this kind of pace for nine miles. You know, the thing is, Jack, all you got to do is close up the distance. I mean, you can win this by a second just by making sure your separation doesn't get to be more than what it was at the start. Yeah, they start 10 minutes apart, and uh, you know, I, I still think the leadership skills here are really going to be critical. Right. How do you feel you guys are doing so far? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. I think, oh. we, I think we got the pack app and all that. If we can get to something, we'll, I think we'll pull ahead of them. Because they said it was pretty tight. We briefed us yesterday. They said we were neck and neck, so... I guess it's pretty big right here, this hump. How far into the march are you? I don't know. How far are we in? About a mile and a half. About a mile and a half. So how much further you got, you think? Seven. About seven miles. Seven and a half, maybe. Uh, any any injuries so far? Oh uh, yeah, that one guy. He's got a hurt knee. He's been bad. He's got a, had a bad knee for a while. It's bothering him. And then another guy, Field, he's got a bad shoulder, and it's starting to bother him too. Help with four. Grab it. This is the part of the leadership call that's important. Here's the NCOs trying to help the guys, give them little hints to see if they can, you know, just gut it out. It's really a gut check. This is a good example of Sergeant Ledman taking, making sure his, his man is okay so that he can carry on, you know, and he's bringing up the, the corpsman, and, you know, th this is what it's all about. Well, and, and our viewers need to understand that each one of these squads does have a Navy corpsman who's out here to support this mission, and in addition to the guys that are staffing up the ambulance as well. Okay. You be all right? You be able to take that one? All right, girl. He must be satisfied that uh, they're ready to go, but I got to tell you, it's just not easy when I see these guys struggling with these packs. These guys are carrying a lot more weight than ever was intended to be carried. 
but you know with this configuration of harness well we're about three miles into the march now and one six seems to be having some injury problems and they're becoming a little bit disorganized fluid replacement is going to be very very critical here these guys are going to lose well over a gallon of water that's equivalent to eight pounds of okay, body weight walking. in this distance Come on, world. Let's go, world. Push it. Push it. Let's go. Well, that's all they need is to have some foot problems. Looks like Corporal Whirl is paying the price for carrying that heavy load, and he's got a ways to go. Sergeant Hicks is going to have to step forward now and get his men together. Hey, can I get some water while I do this? Hey, yes. Yeah. It's less than three miles. Next, on the other side of Brona Loop, take us a damn another break, kick it on into 301. We can do this. I know we can. That's where it's gone, though. You're bare man running. Let's go. Come on. Uh, the 10 minute gap between the squads has widened now to about 15 minutes. We're going to have to see uh, how 1 6 response to this. This is the first test. Back up. The road. The road's never in. Yep. Start lemon. Boy, Paul, they are, they are really marching on. I mean, not only are they fit, but uh, they seem really, really focused on what they're trying to do here. Oh, man, that has got to hurt. With, with the load on, I, I can't believe that man kept walking. I mean, these guys are really on a mission here. You know, anybody that thinks this is easy ought to just throw 100 and some pounds on their back and take a little stroll sometime, Jack. I think they get a great appreciation for how tough this really is. Well, we're back with 1-6 again, and it's now a little over six miles into the hike. Sergeant Hicks has pulled 1-6 back together, but now one of his men has become dehydrated and sick. And this is going to present a whole new problem. It's questionable if he's going to be able to make it to the finish. Clearly, 1-6 is going to fall farther behind. Hey, get his pack off. Hey, get his pack off. Get his pack off. Just keep going. Halfway to go. Let's run Hey. You lose the rest. You know, Jack, this is an example of what an infantry squad is all about. It's figuring out how to work together and get the job done. One six has rallied to lighten the load of the injured man's uh, equipment here, and he's driving on to complete the mission. You know, this is the kind of thinking and teamwork that's critical when Marines take the battlefield. Well, here's 2-2 finishing strong, but they won't carry those bags one step further than they have to. Their squad leader, Sergeant Ledman, did a great job of holding them together. I, I feel like we're doing pretty good. And uh, as far as everybody else being stacked up, I mean, Marines, Marines, sir. I mean, I've got Marines that are hardcore. I've got Marines that got a lot of heart. I've got the Marines that just want to win this thing just because they're competitive. Well, 1-6 had a harder time of it, but Sergeant Hicks made the adjustments needed to get them to the finish line and all together. And you have to finish all together. So even though they finished almost 20 minutes behind 2-2, the competition still is close, and the higher scoring events are still to come. We had some people fall back, but we finished together, and no one wanted to give up. And that's why I'm proud of them. First time I ever had an IV. <laughs> What happened? How did, how did it go down? Oh, yeah. Well, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hold any water down, so yeah, I picked all my water up. 
What we had was a Marine who dislocated his shoulder. Um, what, we're going, what we did was immobilize it, and we're trying to relax his muscles, and in a little bit, we're going to try to reset it. But I want you to hold on to the handle. Got it? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you get back in? Yeah. 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 Um, Cramping up. Cramping. Yeah. What's in there? Yeah, it's not just. It's not. It's not out anymore. He's in. You just finished the road march. What? Uh, what's the plan? We're going to quickly break the Marines up into uh, different groups depending on the billet that they hold, and send them to uh, ranges that are set up to test their skills on a particular weapon uh, that they're supposed to fire in combat. We're doing it immediately after this hike uh, to determine whether the Marines are able to fire those weapons uh, under stressful conditions after they've been exhausted from a long nine mile hike, may they still employ that uh, weapon effectively. And we intend to uh, evaluate that in this way. What, uh, how's the competition going so far? Pretty tight? It's going very, very well. And it's very, very tight at this, uh, at this point. It's uh, anybody's game right now. My name is Corporal Pacheco from Alamogordo, New Mexico. Just got done doing the Namal Hunt for Super Squad. Just wanted to say hi to everybody. Hello. How's it getting? Salt Lake City, Utah. Just like to say hi to my wife, Nadine, and my buddies back home. My name is Lance Corporal Swagger from Phoenix, Arizona. We're here doing the uh, Super Squad competition from Two Two Warlords. I just want to say hi, Mom. Hello, I'm Lance Corporal Cottle. I'm from Houston, Texas. I like to say hi to my wife, Angel. June, North Carolina and the Marine Corps Super Squad competition. This segment is brought to you by Streamlight. Streamlight flashlights for professionals. The individual weapons proficiency event evaluates each Marine on his assigned weapon, as well as the Marines assigned to the AT-4, the squad's anti-tank weapon. The tests are very straightforward and scored based on the number of hits made within a prescribed period of time. Well, as you can see, for the M16 and the squad automatic weapon, or the saw, the targets are very small silhouettes. Now, this might look easy from a range of 10 meters, but only the rounds that are scored are those that hit inside the silhouette. And this evaluation measures precision shooting, and it's a timed event. And of course, Jack, keep in mind that the fatigue effect from the forced nine-mile march is making it that much more difficult. Okay. The M203 is an interesting weapon, part rifle, part grenade launcher. At this range, they'll be shooting at targets from 100 meters to 400 meters. The training rounds give off an orange smoke when they hit the mark so that you know what their landing point is. I give you the command to fire. Your two-minute time limit will start. At my command, fire. The projectile explodes like a grenade, so you just need to get close for it to be effective. But these guys look pretty good, and they're hitting dead on. Yeah, I would agree. These guys are pretty good shots. Now they're going to try some longer range ones. This will be interesting. Hundred and fifty yards, not too bad. That's all in the kill zone. This is a four hundred meter target. Oh, right on. Stand by. Gas, gas, gas. As part of this drill, they've added an interesting twist here shooting with your gas mask on. And now we're going to see who can really shoot. Well, you know, Jack, not only does the gas mask make breathing more difficult, but try aiming your weapon while you're looking through a sweaty set of eyepieces. So this is a very critical skill, and it's a very essential part of being a rifleman. Fire. That's a miss. I think the gas mask is having a detrimental effect here.
There's another miss. There you go. Well, that was close, but also a miss. They only have three rounds. Cease fire, cease fire. Well, this is the AT-4. It replaced the light anti-tank weapon, or law, a I few years ago clear. because it carries a much I bigger punch against clear. armor. For this event, the gunners are shooting simulated rounds at hard targets between 250 and 400 meters away. Oh, I thought we were... Well, they use the simulation round in, in this case because each one of these live rounds costs about $2,500. But the simulated round with Tracer has the exact range and the same trajectory characteristics of a real AT-4 round. And of course, it, less, it costs less than a buck a pop. And it's an excellent training tool. There's a hit. The call for fire drill is a squad leader test. It evaluates their ability to call for fire support. There are two elements graded, radio procedures and the adjustment of rounds. But you have to be good at map reading and range estimation too. For this event, we have an 81 millimeter mortar section supporting the competition. You know, Jack, I've always been impressed with the way the mortar teams call out the firing orders. You know, their, their level of, uh, of training is very impressive. Well, I'd hate to be on the receiving end of that round. And so that they don't waste any ammo, the squad leaders only have three rounds to adjust the steel on target. And it's a skill that's absolutely imperative in combat. Let's check out the AFI scoreboard. Paul is still close, and after six events, 2-2 two -two holds a slim lead, but it's still anybody's game. Well, it's been a long day, and the squads are exhausted, but they're now getting a break, and the movement to the tactical area is gonna be by CH-46, or hook, as the Marines call it. Well, no doubt they are. If they had to carry those loads back over the nine miles they humped this morning, I'm sure everybody would be a casualty. You know, Jack, these guys are riding in helicopters that are older than they are. Yeah, I never liked the hook, Paul. <laughs> but I gotta say, it beats walking. Once they unload the helicopters, they'll move in and set up a night defensive position. And then they'll prepare for the tactical problems, Paul, that are going to start tomorrow. You know, it's amazing to me that after the nine-mile march and all those ranges they ran, starting at 7 o'clock this morning, these skies are still full of it. Yeah, they're moving off smartly. Uh, my name is Cooper Wood from Marion County, Kentucky. And uh, I mentioned St. Louis, Missouri, too. My mom lives there. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I'm Lance Cobalt World. I'm in Lexington Park, Maryland. Hi, Mom and Dad. And we're down there. Carolina and the Marine Super Squad competition. This segment is brought to you by Servant Internet Services. Powerful, flexible, affordable, and certainly dependable. It's another perfect day in North Carolina as we begin day three. Let's go to Gunny Coglin and see what's in store for today. Here this morning, we're going to evaluate the two squad leaders on their ability to issue a five-paragraph order to their Marines for the missions that are upcoming today. It's relatively flat, with a little elevation change. There's thick brush, and it can be very marshy in places around here. Well, we have uh, two recon and surveillance teams in the squad. And uh, once we get near to where the site we're going to uh, recon, we send those two teams out, and they'll get sketches, um, any intel they see there, you know, enemy movement, you know, frequency of cars, how the terrain is, and they'll bring it back to me, and I'll give it to my commander. Uh, the main thing is on this, of course, is to avoid uh, contact with the enemy at all possible. 
Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go to orientation for the reconnaissance patrol that we're supposed to do this afternoon, this morning. Okay. Orientation. We kept them pretty busy last night uh, preparing for these missions today, uh, so I don't know if they've actually had a chance to do much recovery. Evaluators are going to be assigned to the to the squads. Uh, either the, there'll be one evaluator going with the recon patrol. There'll be two evaluators, uh, myself and one other, going with the ambush patrol. A few more moving parts on the ambush patrol. We want to make sure that we don't miss anything. As evaluators, what we're looking for are all the standards that have been set forth by the Marine Corps. Our Marine Corps Combat Readiness Evaluation System lays out uh, significant uh, uh, items that have to be accomplished during each portion of a tactical mission, and that's what we're going to be looking for. To all enemy force, and moving along that route and prevent their terrorist attack. First and foremost, we're looking for a squad leader that can issue an order confidently. Uh, what he's got to bear in mind is that uh, the, the 12 Marines he's issuing this order to are getting ready to depart friendly lines into, uh, into bad guy territory, and they have to be confident in that squad leader's ability to lead them. I would say the hardest part is uh, standing up and convincing those Marines that you're absolutely prepared to lead that mission. Key elements of the recon are going to be stealthful movement to the objective, uh, we're being able to report and bring back uh, the required information that the commander needs about the objective they're being sent to look at. Uh, critical to the commander's ability to make decisions later down the road. Being undetected at the objective is the key to success in a recon, and you also want to make sure you report all this information. You don't want anybody to know you're there, and you want to get all the information back. You know, it's interesting, because Gunny Mackey is really hardcore. He's making sure that Sergeant Ledman knows exactly where he is so we can evaluate that and make sure that he's following his plan to the letter. And that's one of the things about this competition, Paul, that I find, you know, very, very important. These Marines are getting an excellent evaluation, and if they don't have it, then they're getting marked down for it. And I think that's very important in a competition like this. They need to know if they're really good or if they're just sliding by. Well, the aggressors have an important job too, Jack, but it's tough always being the training aid and on the losing side. Yeah, but these guys do a good job, Paul. The uh, aggressor's just a helping tool for the, uh, for the Marines to carry on their mission and just to make the situation a little bit more real for them. So they're actually thinking there's an enemy out there, so they can get their mindset on that, sir. Roger, I just need to know when they're in position so I can uh, adjust the aggressors accordingly. Over. Roger. Check your vicinity, okay? Uh, Roger, over. Do it. That's great. Roger, over. Well, with me, with teams, there's two teams out. Did you know that? No, no, uh, that's why I'm asking you. That's why I'm asking you. There's two teams out. Okay. Good to go. The team I was with low crawled across the road in pairs. All right. Was a uh, probably a diversionary. Right, while you were chasing around, running after them, they were the other team was gathering up information on the uh, objective. Right, not the smartest move, but it worked. Good job. Uh, go ahead, call for extract. Well, that's it for the recon missions, but stand by for more action. The ambush patrols are coming right up. Sergeant Ledman after the recon. Here's what he had to say. Well, this morning we did our reconnaissance patrol. Mission accomplished. We got everything done we needed to do. Now we had, I just got a frag order about three hours ago. Now I'm getting ready to step off of my ambush patrol, and this time I'm ready to kill something.
Okay, so how do you feel? How's the squad performing? Are they up? Are they, they still into it? Are they beat up? Well, right now they're starting to recover after that beat down from Tuesday. I said that humping all the ranges. The key elements uh, during the ambush mission are going to be uh, effective fires in the kill zone uh, and ensuring that the enemy is completely destroyed. Uh, following that, it'll be a thorough search of the ambush area for any information that they can bring back to the commander. Jack, the aggressors are moving cautiously. They know it's an ambush, but they don't know where. Well, it looks like 2-2 is doing it right. They put a high volume of fire in the kill zone. They're not giving the aggressors a chance. And now, Paul, the task turns to collecting information and making a quick getaway. This is where the squad's got to be organized and disciplined. Got to get in there, find out what the bad guys have, and get out. What kind of stuff are they looking for, Jack? Anything that will be of value. Maps, radio frequencies, books, plans, anything. It's good technique making sure that all the dead people, the weapons are moved away from them in case some of them are faking it or they're not quite dead. And uh, the last thing you want when you're searching somebody is to be surprised and have the guy become aggressive again. Yeah, the only thing I wasn't too happy about was the actual, it took a little bit longer for the EPW search teams to go through than I, than I anticipated. But I should have sent him one one team, but that was a call that I made, so I got to live with it. Okay, so what's next now? What do we do tonight? Well, I'm about to go debrief the patrol, and then uh, maybe they'll give me another frag or maybe they won't. We'll find out. Then uh, what's on? What's in store for these guys? These guys? More work. A lot more work. We're not done. Which we think we're doing real good, sir. Real good. Third day, how are the guys tired? Uh, we are, but... Tomorrow's the last day, and we're so excited, so it don't matter. And we think we we think we we'll pretty much know we're winning. So I mean, that's just getting us through it all. How's it starting to? Start 11? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's keeping us all together. We're, we're all going through. Okay. Just gonna fight. I mean, a lot of us are tired. Well, now it's one sixes turn, Paul. The need to move with stealth and pick a good ambush location is very important. They have to get there and spring their trap without anybody knowing they're moving into position. discovered during the movement. This is going to complicate the mission because they know they're there now. And they obviously did something wrong and the evaluator wanted to find out, you know, uh, or, or get their attention again. Well, this is the ambush site they picked. It looks pretty good. It's a kill zone. It's down in a small valley. Looks like they're planning their defensive fires. Well, one six took a long time to get in position to ensure they're not observed. Of course, now's the hard part, waiting for the bad guys to come into the ambush. Here they come. Looks like it worked. One six sprang the ambush and put on overwhelming volume of fire just like you're supposed to do.
Look, look how careful they are when they search the bodies. That's just in case a dying aggressor tries to set up a booby trap. That's good technique. Yeah, they're doing a real good job of searching them. Now they're clearing the area. Put up a smoke grenade to cover their movement out. That's a good plan. They're a bit tired, but that's to be expected what we're doing out here. But uh, like I said, we haven't faltered. Uh, we're still going strong. We're still performing. And everybody's still motivated. Finished the first tactical problem. How'd it go? Uh, went real well. Uh, real proud of what the Marines did. Uh, showed they've been working hard, uh, preparing for, for what's come down to this week. Uh, we're halfway through with the tactical scenario. Tomorrow, uh, two more missions. Uh, squads running them in the morning and flip-flopping. Uh, running the same missions in the uh, afternoon. And uh, we'll have a winner. Well, checking the AFI scoreboard at the end of day three, 2-2 still holds a slim edge, but 1-6 can pull it out if they have outstanding performances on these remaining two tactical problems. Hey, my name is TFC Johnson from uh, Ferguson, Texas. I just want to say hey to all my mom and dad back at home, all my friends. I'm Lance Covadano from West This segment is brought to you by Armed Forces Insurance, providing for the insurance needs of military leaders since 1887. Any station, any station, radio check over. Today, we're we'll going to go conduct an attack on the site that we reconned yesterday. The new enemy update is that uh, since we annihilated their, their patrol and ambush last night, they brought down a mortar, so they can retaliate on us. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go take out that mortar position. This is 2-2 moving out for the attack. For this mission, it's important that the squad move as close to the objective as possible undetected. The element of surprise is crucial. You want to start the fight on your time when you're ready. Now, just before the objective, the squad verifies its plans and then moves into their attack positions, again, hopefully without being discovered. Then once everything is ready, they will open up with a violent volume of fire and fight their way right over the objective. They want to sweep over the objective and go past it, chasing the enemy away. Now, once they know they've won the battle, they secure and consolidate on the objective. The squad will have broken down into teams for security, search, and any other of the tasks that needs to be done. All the time, they're going to be alert for a counterattack. And now, Sergeant Ledman has a prearranged signal that gets them to consolidate. Now they're going out to the positions. Looks like a pretty good plan. I think they've done a pretty good job. Couple 11, how many were there? How many what? Oh, how many you mean? Squad size plus. Squad size. Yeah. You can see on my last one. Let's go, Ledman. Let's go. Hurry up. Squad size plus. Sitting in D. Well, this is an unexpected twist. Yeah. The Graders are really going to check these guys right. out. Sergeant Ledman has been declared killed in the counterattack. And this is going to test the squad's ability to improvise and see if the junior leaders can take charge and complete the mission. Got everything? Roger. Squad leader's down. First down, pick up the squad. Break. Hey, look, look. Yeah. Well, you know, Jack, this is one of the things I've always admired about the American military, and especially the Marine Corps. They take care of their own. Roger, have No dead or alive ever left behind. This is a very, very professional evolution. You know, I'll tell you, the Marine Corps is one of the best deals the public has. They only get six cents out of every dollar spent on defense. Here comes the medevacs, Blake. You know, Paul, they really are pretty professional. I'm very impressed with the organization here. These junior guys stepped right up and took charge when their squad leader was killed, and I'm sure this is going to score high.
important event we put on every year. Uh, I've been in the Marine Corps since 69. I remember Super Squad back when I was enlisted. It was something that everyone strives to be part of, to be part of the Super Squad. I think just the esprit de corps we've got in the Marine Corps, uh, these guys are going to be, well, the best we've got in the regiment right now, and they're representing the regiment, and everybody's really pulling for them. It just builds up a lot of unit pride. Hi, I'm Corporal Adcox from Marine Corps. Marine Corps Super Squad competition brought to you in part by Servant. Managed hosting and custom solutions for your internet needs. Jack, what's with the cleaning of the weapons? Paul, if you're an infantry man, that's what you do. You train and you clean your gear and you train and you clean your gear again. And, and I can tell you, it's never clean enough. It's never clean enough. Well, here it is, the final mission for 1-6. And it's still a tight competition. And you can bet they're going to be extra careful to get everything right. Now they're in the defense, and it takes time to plan a good defensive position. The first thing you have to do is select good terrain. Then you have to plan your defense in layers. You dig in, you lay communications, you clear fields of fire. I mean, there's always something that you can do. The more time you have, the more you can do. And you know the evaluators are going to be looking at you for every little thing to get all those extra points. But at the same time, you have to keep out good security, because now the bad guys are the ones who are trying to bring the surprise. Looks to me like they're ready. I, I think uh, I think they've done a pretty good job. Here they come. Yeah, one six has picked up the enemy approach. Locked and loaded. And now it'll be interesting to see who shoots first. I mean, it looks like the enemy is not exactly sure where their positions are, and that's good. Volume of fire is good. And I think one if one six is doing the job. Well, it looks like they repelled the assault. It was a good plan. It was well executed. You guys going in the motel tonight, right? Yeah. 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 Weird. Are you happy with the way the competition's going? I am, sir. I think not only do the Marines uh, come out here and get a chance to show us, you know, some of the more senior Marines and the division what skills that they perfect, you know, through training, but also it tells them themselves what they need to work on. So I think it's an important thing for them. Well, Paul, it was an exciting and very unique competition, and pretty close as well. But 2-2 two -two in the end has come out and earned the right to be called Marine Super Squad. But I gotta tell you, 1-6, they can be proud of their performance as well. They both did really excellent jobs. Jack, based on what we've seen, it's easy to see why the Marines are America's 911 force. First place goes to the squad from 2nd Battalion, 2nd Marines. All right. Hey. Attention to orders. Well, the awards are important to the participants. I think it's interesting how Sergeant Ledman and Major General Blackman have the same broader perspective of the importance of this competition. First of all, it was actually pretty good. Um, they don't get to get this far unless they are good, so the competition was good to go. But uh, the competition is not really against them, it's with ourselves to find out how well we do. We made sure that we had the best of the best. The squad ultimately wins or loses the battle. Uh, the colonels and the lieutenant colonels and the majors and the captains and, and the staff sergeants and gunnies uh, get the squad to the fight. Um, but it's the squad that closes the last couple hundred yards. The, the squad ultimately wins or loses on the, on the objective. The essence of it uh, is, is really uh, the, the teamwork um, and, and the demonstration uh, across the division of the importance of the rifle squad. And I think that's the case across the Marine Corps, why we kind of highlight uh, and, and have this squad competition to 
to demonstrate and remind people across the Marine Corps that the, uh, that the squad is really the building block, not only of the Marine Division, but of the Marine Corps itself. Jack, over these last several days, having watched these Marines, it brings back to me the words of President Reagan. And he said, some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they've made a difference to this world. The Marines don't have that problem. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. But my favorite quote, what I get out of this when I see these Marines is, the more sweat in training, the less blood in combat. And that certainly applies to these guys. They're clearly professionals, clearly professionals. And it's no wonder why we have the best military in the world. Well, that's it from Camp Lejeune and the 2001 Marine Super Squad competition. So long, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.